Okay. Uh, Ryan, would you like to begin? Yes. Good morning, Chairman Beach, Vice Chair Cruz Perez, and Senators Brown, Stack, and Thompson. I really appreciate this opportunity to weigh in on S-2100, which I think is historic legislation that would position New Jersey as a national leader in building an inclusive democracy. Uh, my name is Ryan Higgood. I lead the New Jersey Institute for Social Justice. We are a legal advocacy organization, and our mission really is to identify load-bearing walls of structural inequality that if we topple them will open up opportunities for urban residents across New Jersey. And I want to recognize Senator Cunningham and Senator Rice for their courage in introducing this bill, which I think is significant in the life of our democracy here in New Jersey. As you all know, at the time of our country's founding, New Jersey really stood out as having one of the most expansive voting rights uh, schemes in all of the 13 states. In 1776, our state's first constitution allowed some women and free black men to vote. However, over time, New Jersey erect, erected a wall of democratic exclusion that limited the franchise, as Senator Cunningham mentioned, to white men only. Today, New Jersey stands far behind many of our sister states, despite the ideals of democracy that were embedded in our first constitution at the time of our founding. Even as we're watching other states make real strides in the direction of expanding democracy, most recently, as you all know, in one of the greatest expansions of democracy in recent history, if not in history itself, Florida voters voted to overturn a Jim Crow law and restore the right to vote to nearly 1.5 million people. One of our colleagues, Juan Cartagena from Latino Justice, was one of the champions of that effort and is here to testify about that. In the last 20 years, more than 23 states have expanded the right to vote for people with criminal convictions. And I submit to this, co this committee that now it really is New Jersey's turn to do the same thing. As we explain in our report, 1844, no more, let us vote. The story is often told about how racist Southern legislatures built democracies that excluded black people, other people of color, and women from voting. But what is less well known, I think, is that this history of racial exclusion also took root very deeply right here in New Jersey. As Senator Rice mentioned, New Jersey was the first northern state to restrict voting to white men. New Jersey opposed the Emancipation Proclamation, and New Jersey was the last northern state to abolish slavery. Following the Civil War, New Jersey refused to ratify each of the Reconstruction Amendments. It is against this racist historical backdrop that New Jersey further restricted the right to vote to people with criminal convictions in 1844, to Senator Cunningham's point, the same year that New Jersey restricted voting to white men only. New Jersey's decision to maintain this practice in 2019, 175 years later, accomplishes the same racial exclusion that was prevalent in 1844. And so today, New Jersey de denies the right to vote to nearly 100,000 people, including my colleague uh, to my right, Ron, because of a criminal conviction. This is more people than reside in the city of Trenton, where we sit today, and more people than live in the cities of Camden, Hoboken, Montclair, and in each of more than 150 cities across New Jersey. And although black people comprise just 15% of New Jersey's overall population, black people comprise more than half of those who've lost their voting rights because of a criminal conviction. Indeed, owing to population increases, there are more black people in New Jersey disqualified from voting today than were prohibited from voting prior to the passage of the 15th Amendment. And it's important to note that New Jersey continues to deny the right to vote to people with criminal convictions even though there's no legitimate public safety or criminal justice purpose served by doing so. I want to say a quick word about what occasions these racial disparities, and it is that New Jersey connects the right to vote to its criminal justice system. But the challenge is that New Jersey has some of the highest racial disparities in incarceration in America. A black adult is 12 times more likely to be incarcerated than a white adult. 
A black child in New Jersey is 30 times more likely to be incarcerated than a white child. These are the highest racial disparities in incarceration in America, even though research shows that black and white people mostly commit most offenses at about the same rate. These racial disparities are not justified by actual participation in crime. But because New Jersey connects the right to vote to a criminal justice system characterized by racial disparities that are unjustified, New Jersey literally imports racial discrimination from the criminal justice system into the political process, which is why there are nearly 100,000 people who cannot vote. And this phenomenon accomplishes what now prohibited poll taxes, grandfather clauses, and literacy tests explicitly sought to do, which is at least to disproportionately deny the right to vote to black people. But today, as I close, we're not here to judge New Jersey based on this shameful, dark past, or to judge New Jersey based on the worst thing that it's ever done. Instead, we're embracing this important opportunity with S2100 to turn the corner on this shameful history. To do so, we in this room and outside the room uh, formed the 1844 No More Let Us Vote campaign. This is a robust coalition that includes impacted voices, many of whom you'll hear from directly today, and system-involved people, community leaders, policymakers, elected officials, faith leaders, and coalition partners who are each urging passage of S2100. 14, 1844 No More is made up of more than 100 organizations, as well as the mayors of major cities, including Newark's mayor, New Jersey City's mayor, Hoboken's mayor, who have each joined the call to seize this moment to restore voting rights to each person in the state with a criminal conviction. And to be clear, restoring voting rights to only those on probation and parole is insufficient because it would worsen the racial disparities that already exist. If we were just to restore voting rights to people on probation and parole, we would continue to increase the racial disparities so that then a staggering 62% of those disqualified from voting would be black. Our collective task, particularly in this difficult national moment, is to reduce barriers to voting and encourage more people to participate in the political process. We have an opportunity as a state to serve as a national bright light in building an inclusive democracy. And to do that, we must erase the stain on our democracy and join Maine and Vermont and most other Western democracies by ending New Jersey's practice of denying the right to vote to people with criminal convictions and declaring that we're 1844 no more by passing S2100. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Is there uh, any question? Any question? Thank you, Ryan. Thank